Shalom Israel. I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashim Al Shai, Bashim Rakakwadash, the Buanas of the Apostles and the Elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to Lekab Deir, Donors of Faith, and Labor of Love, Truth, and Sincerity. All right, now I want to get into a quick lesson based upon the scripture here in Romans, the first chapter. This is um, Romans. Fuck you. This is Romans 1 and 25, and it reads, Who changed. Matter of fact, let me start at um let me start at verse uh twenty one it says Romans one and twenty one because that when they knew the Mosai, they glorified him not as the Mosai, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible power into an image made like unto un, made like to corruptible man into birds and four footed beasts and creeping things, wherefore the most high also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of Yahweh into a lie and worship and served the creature more than the creator who was blessed forever to wow. Right. And, you know, so I wanted to entitle this lesson, who changed the truth of the Most High? You know, and when you look through it all of everything, you see how, you know, our people, along with the other nations, were our people following the other nations and their customs. And and in today's time, the so-called white man, uh, projecting you know uh these images because they don't project them right before uh you know your face and tell you worship this or you to serve this but they put everything in subliminal form you know for that the truth of the most high to continuously uh be thought upon as a lie you know so when people see these scriptures or when they hear things in the scriptures all they see is nothing but uh, uh fables you know it's just nothing but stories into them. It's not a, a, a real historic book. When you look at everything throughout the scriptures, you can clearly place the different timelines, so on and so forth, all according to secular history, right? But um, the one of the major things is that our people always looked up to the other nations, you know, uh, for what they had, you know, and different things like that. That's the beginning because that makes our people vain, you know, that's the beginning. And like the scriptures say, uh, basically, um, when pride sets in, um, that's when you start to change. Um, when pride sets in, that's when you start to remove your heart from the Lord, you know, pretty much, so to speak. So that's what our people have done throughout this time frame. And ultimately, you know, the so-called white man is responsible for forwarding that affliction and keeping our people in a standstill in which they are, in which they're serving uh, the mammon God, you know. So real quick, I want to go to um, <clears throat> the book of, what is it? Yeah, where's my Solomon? Actually, you know what, let me go to Deuteronomy first. <clears throat> it's book of Deuteronomy 4. In 19, it reads, uh, Deuteronomy 4 and 19, Unless thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the host of heaven should be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy power have divided unto all the nations under the whole heaven. And this is what our people have done, because when you look at things in which, like, uh, you know, <clears throat> the other nations, you know, they had their their uh, various gods, you know, uh, like with the Greeks, you know, uh, Athena, Zeus and all that, Thunder, like, you know, Thor and all these different people. They were supposed to be the gods of the heavens, deemed by the stars and all these different things, man. So the things in which the most I put up here for the signs and the seasons under heaven, our people fell into that trance of the other nations, you know, and started worshiping them, you know. <laughs> Um, and that brings me to, now that brings me to Wisdom of Solomon 13, Wisdom of Solomon 13 and 1, surely vain are all men by nature who are ignorant of the Mosai 
and could not out of the good things that are seen know him that is. Neither by considering the works did they acknowledge the work master, because that's all, you know, um, the heavens is, is the work of the work master, right? Uh, verse 2, but deemed either fire or wind or the swift air or the circle of the stars or the violent water or the lights of heaven to be the gods which govern the world with whose beauty, if they being delighted, took them to be gods, let them know how much better the Lord of them is. For the first author of beauty have created them, right? So that's the works of the Most High. And <clears throat> so now when you go in these churches and these people bowing down before these idols or when these people are going to these masjids or they go over to Mecca and they bowing down to the Kaaba stone, man, this is all they're doing. They're giving reference to the works of the work master and not the work master himself, which makes no damn sense, man. But, you know, our people, they need some type of physical, tangible um, sign or, or emblem that's so special to them that they feel as though that they have to worship or to give some sort of reverence to, you know, which makes no sense because it's clear that the most high present is, is omni, what's the word, uh, uh, omnipresent or omnipotent, you know, or uh, 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 I can't... I know it's omni something. I can't uh, think of the exact word, um, <clears throat> but it's basically like the most high's presence is everywhere. So you don't have to physically have a king. That's why our people went off at where they went. Um, they asked for a king, and the most high got mad at them and said, well, "He's basically said, I'm your king, but since now y'all want a king, y'all gonna have a king. He gonna rule over y'all. He gonna be harsh, etc., etc., etc." Because people always want to see something physical, something tangible, or else they don't want to believe in it, or else they want to put their mind towards something else because they see somebody else got something else. And that's not the type of mind frame that we should be in, man. You know? Um, it was my Solomon. And then it's like I lost my train of thought. <clears throat> Yeah, go back to Romans. <laughs> Slapping these damn ads, man. I can't get rid of this. I don't know. Bible ads. Oh, there we go. Slacky about that. <clears throat> but yeah, I'll read that again in Romans 1 and 25. Who changed the truth of Yahweh into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than their creator, who was blessed forever to wop. <clears throat> right? And another prime example. Thinking of that is what this first Maccabees three and forty eight and laid open the book of the law wherein the heathen sought had sought to paint the likeness of their images. Okay, and this is what they've done. This is why nowadays, even when you go and try to get um the the King James sixteen eleven version, depending on what you want you have and I had went and got the 400 year anniversary one, but yet it had nothing but eating my images in there, man. So that goes to show you that they try to change the truth of the Most High in every single way possible. For one, they stolen our identity, you so-called Black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. They put up their images. They line their movies. They make you feel as though you're nothing but monkeys swinging in the trees, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The so-called white man is responsible for all of this, man. You know? Our people are responsible as well as been as though they wanted to follow the heathen, man. They wanted to follow it. They wanted to do these different things, man. You know? And they're against us in every shape, way, form, or fashion possible. But yet our people still, you know, love to condition themselves towards their ways as opposed to seeking out the Lord, which is true righteousness, man. So we can get up out of all of this madness, you know? So the so-called white man, he's responsible for all of these different things, man. You know, and that's why the most high ultimately got to put them to death. Right? Um, that brings me to the book of Amos. <clears throat> Amos 1 and 11. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressors of Edom, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he did pursue his brother with the sword, and did cast off all pity, and his anger did tear perpetually, and he kept his wrath forever. Behold, I will send a fire upon Teman, which shall devour the palaces of, of 
Basra. And, and this is for Edom. Everything that he has built, you know, within the society has been based upon rape, robbery, murder, and deception, man. This is what he leads by, deception. You know, so they can, within their head, they can change, you know, uh, uh, the truth for the Mosa, you know, and, and make people think as though that this is not our book. But at the end of the day, this is why the Lord set his remnant to the side, which Lord willing, we are a part of that remnant who, is, who have been waking up to the madness of the so-called white man. And we will rise up, thus said Yahweh Bashim Yahweh and, and rain on you, man. We raining on you now with the spirit of the, of the Lord's mouth. And the Lord going physically rain on you when he comes back with his second return, man. You know? So, um, you know, with that, you know, I hope the segment was edifying. And I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Akakwadash, the Buanas of the Apostles and the Elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom, select up there, doing this work of faith, labor of love and true sincerity. Shalom.